taking up the issue. Do you want of to just take that? Judicial uh, reforms. Um, it's been in the pipeline for a long time, and I have uh, publicly spoken out in favor of a judicial appointments commission. Um, I don't know how many of you are aware, and but I take it that most of you are lawyers here, so you are perfectly aware of the fact that under the Constitution, the initial uh, power lies lay with the executive, uh, a power which uh, of appointment of judges to the higher judiciary, incidentally also to the to the sub, uh, to the subordinate judiciary or to the district ju uh, judiciary. Uh, gradually, over a period of time, that power was taken away through a process of interpretation uh, by the Supreme Court of the Articles in the Constitution and vested very firmly with uh, the judges themselves. So now, like Napoleon, we crown ourselves king. The point is that the reason why the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court certainly did have reason uh, for doing what it did, because over decades, the judiciary had been subjected to assault by the executive in the form of supersessions, in the form of punitive transfers, and all this meant that this was eating into the independence of the judiciary, which is essential for any democratic country. And the fear under which a lot of judges functioned was certainly not helping democracy survive. And perhaps it was because of that reason that the, the judges stretched the constitutional language in such a fashion that they were able to take over from the executive, so to speak, the power of appointment, the power of transfer. But having taken it over, and that really happened in uh, 1993, and then it was affirmed in 1998 by two decisions of the Supreme Court, uh, it is the power is now vested in the Supreme Court, the senior most judges in the Supreme Court. One of the criticisms that the Supreme Court had made of the executive modus of operation was that they acted arbitrarily, they acted secretively, that no one knew why a judge was appointed, and that judges were being appointed for considerations other than merit. That there was no objective criteria. Unfortunately, even after the judges took over the power of appointment, the same problems continued and continue to persist. Namely, it's secretive. One doesn't know why a particular person is appointed. One doesn't know why a person is not appointed. One is not quite sure why a judge is transferred from one high court to another, why a particular judge is not made the chief justice of a particular high court, why he is or she is. So this opacity, the lack of transparency that we had under the earlier regime is con has continued with this new setup of the judicial collegium. The, we were just discussing just before I, we uh, started this discussion today that how the Law Commission had in fact long ago suggested that there should be a Judicial Appointments Commission for the higher judiciary. And that report, like many reports of the Law Commission, just gathers dust. Then you had the Venkatachalaya Commission on uh, the, when the Constitution was revisited, and they also suggested that there should be a Judicial Appointments Commission. Justice Verma, who was the author 
of the decision of the Supreme Court by which the Supreme Court assumed the powers of appointment and transfer, himself criticized and said, I made a mistake and that there should be a judicial commission. He said that in writing. Now, successive governments have taken very hesitant, they've taken one step forward and three steps backward in the formulation of a judicial appointments commission. Why the thing hasn't gone forward, I'm not very sure. But at last, they have in fact come forward with a bill. And if you find from the book, I, I don't know if it has been distributed to the people here, but they have said that the bill as it stands doesn't, you, you can't really uh, go with it. Why? Because it, it is now, of course, it'll, the, it has given the power back to the legislature. And the legislature, as everyone knows, is nothing else but the executive in disguise. Um, so there you are, you're back to square one. So one of the suggestions which has been made is that whatever you do, you must do it by constitutional amendment. And that if you have a judicial account uh, uh, appointments commission, it should be by way of a constitutional amendment. At present, the bill provides for uh, the judicial commission to be constituted by the prime minister, uh, by three, by the chief justice and two senior judges, and uh, two jurists to be appointed in, uh, by, uh, by consent of the other members of the commission. The, the, the problem, I don't know how this is going to work, but the problem with this is that a, a, something that is done by statute can also be taken away or changed by statute. So whatever the, the composition of the Judicial Appointments Commission is, that should be by, by way of a constitutional amendment, and so it is not easily amended, although our constitution has been amended several times, and it seems to be uh, easier to do this here than in other countries. Um, the lack of objective criteria is something that one doesn't know, as I said uh, at the outset, one doesn't know why a particular person is being appointed or is not being appointed. What are the criteria? Is it seniority? Is it representativeness? Has gender got anything to do with it? Is religion important? How uh, far is seniority, how far does seniority trump merit? How do you assess merit? Number of judgments? The quality of judgments? One doesn't really know. So the other thing is that you must have objective criteria. And that can be that should be quite clear. And finally, that the proceedings should be transparent. In other words, with people like Rajdeep, this is not my bias showing, but I sincerely mean it, that there should be discussion, open discussion about proceedings. They won't be in camera, like it is, uh, as I have said repeatedly, that the, the process of appointments with the executive and now with the judiciary is really one of the best kept secrets. One doesn't know why. RTI applications have been f filed, but to no avail. So these are the things that I think that you need transparency, you need objective criteria, and you need a dispassionate body, an independent, autonomous body, as independent and autonomous as can be made under the Constitution. So this in brief is what I think about judicial appointments.